Well folks, this is uh, today's harvest. Um, that's probably about three to four kilos there. And uh, I've been getting a lot uh, in the last two months thereabouts. Um, in fact, I've actually been getting something like this since midway or through July when uh, Desert King started to herb or started to ripen for me. And then we had, um, and then all of the other braves, of course, as well from the other trees. And then we had a period of about two weeks uh, where we didn't get any, or uh, not much anyway. Uh, and that was the window between Braber ripening and main crop ripening. And uh, now they're all coming in. Um, so we have Smith, which is still an absolute winner, probably the best fig in the orchard. LSU Champagne, Celeste, um, Negroni. Uh, doo -doo -doo. What else is there? It's that unknown fig, I don't know, Ronde Bordeaux and a few others. Um, so it's kind of hard to keep up. Um, I've been, I have a freezer full of figs. I'm eating a ton of figs every single day. And um, I've started dehydrating figs just to uh, get try and get through them all. I wouldn't be surprised if I have uh, given myself diabetes with the amount of them that I'm eating. Um, but anyway, I wanted to show you this just to show you what you can actually achieve. Uh, There's actually probably too much for me. I'm, I'm actually very seriously considering going commercial because I've had some people who wanted to purchase fresh figs off me. But anyway, that's a different story. So part of the reason why I think I've been getting such a good yield this year, uh, despite the absolute horrendous summer, I actually think this is the worst summer we've had in a good few years, certainly worse than last year, which was also atrocious. Uh, but part of the reason I think I'm getting good harvest is just that I, the trees are mature. You can see them hitting the roof here and they're actually too big. Um, and I think maturity uh, does or plays a big part in um, just general ro robustness, if that's even a word, uh, and pro productivity. Um, the trees are much bigger, more limbs, more fruit, and um, they're much hardier. Um, and as well as that, I did minimal pruning, um, which I should have done more because I really don't want them getting up that high. Um, and part of the reason why I did minimal pruning is just because I was lazy, uh, but also because going into the growing season next year, there's none here that I can give you an example of. I want buds like this apical buds um i do not want uh let's see if i can find an example something like this on a tree going into the next season because what has to happen is this has to form a bud and then a shoot and then fruit whereas a apical bud like the one i just showed you there can get going from the start for, or from the get-go and um, now ideally you don't want it up there you probably want it down here somewhere and um, so you see these some of these green shoots that have come up from the base i'm going to leave them and cut out all of these um uh, this old lignified wood here that's probably about two two or three years old now uh, ideally as well you probably don't want green wood going into the winter so i should have uh, nipped the bud at the top of that to help that lignify you see the lignification starting there um, but to be honest, it's quite mild here in Ireland during our winters and I have a polytone, so they get through the winter, no problem. And figs are, are, are actually hardier than you might expect. But uh, that's how she's looking at the, at the moment. Um, I'll probably have a, a lot less figs next year because I probably will do a hard prune on most of them. Um, there's just not enough airflow and, you know, light is becoming a problem for some of the plants that I'm growing down in these beds lower down here. But yeah, um, too many figs. There you go, folks.